Hello and good afternoon to you all. Thank you for your time for joining this webinar on uh, new features of the Wolfram language and Mathematica version 13.2. My name is Thomas Pornweiser. Uh, I am a member of Unisoft uh, Plus GmbH. Uh, let me shortly introduce my company also. Uh, we are based in Berg in Austria. We have around 50 employees. Uh, most of them are software engineers. And we also get theoretical physicists and data scientists. We are a Wolfram technology reselling partner and our main customers in this area are Austrian universities as well as the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft in Germany. And we provide license and installation support. So from your order of Mathematica until it runs on your machine. And furthermore, we also provide some technical support uh, in using Mathematica. Of course, we're not experts in every uh, domain. So our support is uh, limited to, to the areas we, we are, have expertise in. And Uh, other business areas of our company are data science, industrial mathematics, uh, financial mathematics, and we also provide consulting and project partnership in data science pro projects and work from technology related projects. Um, in case of any questions, you can contact uh, our office at the email address office at unisoftoplus.com. So this brings me to the main part of the presentation. Uh, here is a short overview of uh, the release uh, releases of Wolfram language and Mathematica since the very beginning from nine, uh, before 1990 uh, up to now, 2023. Uh, and the last three versions, the version 13.0 uh, was released in December 21. Then came version 13.1 in June 2022. And now we have the latest version 13.2, which was released in December last year. What is new uh, since uh, version 13.0 is maybe you already have installed 13.0 or 13.1, so you already know this. Uh, it is now, uh, there are separate installers for the documentation and the program itself, uh, the documentation and the program of Mathematica. And um, yes, this gives you the opportunity to uh, reduce uh, the disk space of, of Mathematica. If you install on Mathematica without documentation, it will also always uh, refer you to the online documentation. Uh, of course, if you have uh, not always uh, internet available, then you might prefer to install also the offline version of the documentation. And as you can see here in this installation of Mathematica comparison, we have several gigabytes of documentation which in, on the one side is installed and on the other side not. And so this gives you quite a bit of reduction of disk space needed. Also not quite so new uh, since version 13.0, you already might know this. Um, uh, the experience while typing has been improved. For example, if you type here, uh, Braces and, and uh, parentheses, uh, the closing brace or parentheses will always be added automatically also for um, comments or uh, association brackets, etc. So this is also gives you a bit more convenience while typing. Also, uh, the behavior of code leakages has been a, uh, changed. So previously, uh, those compound symbols have been replaced by Unicode characters in the notebook. So now the behavior is just uh, a visual effect. So if you place your cursor 
in the middle. As you can see that Mathematica internally saves uh, the symbols as you typed them, but displays uh, the compound symbol. Here if I... So this, this gives you also, also a bit uh, better um, ability or convenience while typing. So for example, if you need to change it to single brackets here, then you have those available. Uh, what's new in the notebook interface um, is also that there has been added a toolbar with common actions uh, for um, beginners as well as power users. So let me shortly show you this toolbar. For this purpose, I switch to the working environment and under window toolbar, I get the default toolbar here. And what now has changed also in 13.2, it's slightly improved. It's now context sensitive. So if you, for example, place your cursor on a text cell, you will get your specialized uh, controls for formatting your text cell. So changing the, the background color, for example, and also the, the, the frame and a dingbat, for example, if you want that. And also, if you if you switch to a computation cell, you will see that those symbols here change. And here you can, for example, uh, extend the current selection to the next higher level of expression. And you can also uh, add, for example, natural language input here. The screencast is uh, really uh, slowing down my computer quite a bit. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Yeah. Well, if you want to know the astral distance of Sun and Earth at the current moment in time, we can here. Get this measurement. Astro distance, by the way, is a new function which has been added in, in version 13.2. We will come to this uh, at a later slide. So let's switch back to presentation mode. Uh, what has changed in version 13.2 is also that uh, the compiler has been improved further. Uh, there are the set of compilable functions has been further extended. So now you can also compile until loops, uh, work with numeric arrays, sparse arrays, etc. Uh, all those functions are now supported by the compiler. And moreover, you have also com improved compilation performance. Uh, this faster compilation is enabled uh, due to the fact that the compiler itself now is, is compiled to machine code. Uh, larger portions of, this, of the compilers are compiled to machine code, so it really compiles faster. And also the generated code uh, might be faster in this version because uh, there have been internal optimizations added. Um, such that the generated code uh, might run faster. Uh, what's quite handy is also that now compiling existing functions, which have uh, de been defined in a classic way, so for example, this colors function here, um, you might know this uh, 3, 3m plus 1 problem, uh, if I define the Collins, Collins function here, I have multiple definitions and with pattern matching, uh, one of these branches will get active. What now is, is, is possible is to pass uh, such a definition the compiler. What, what do you need to do for it? Uh, this down values function is now new in version 13.2 and it wraps uh, the symbol which represents your function 
and if you annotate uh, then these down values functions with with uh, the types you want uh, the generated code to operate on so uh, the argument to the function should be a machine integer and the result so should also be a machine integer uh, then you can pass this thing to function compile and if i now compile uh, this function I get back a compiled code function, which, uh, as we see, uh, takes a 60-bit integer and, and spits out another 64-bit integer. And you just for, for fun, let's uh, visualize uh, the graph of, this of the first 20 natural numbers, uh, the orbit in this three, three plus one problem. Okay, you see that. This compiled callers function here can really be used for this purpose now. Okay, let's go on. What do el what else do we have uh, with regards to compiler improvements? And now there is also a type hint uh, function or type hint annotation available. Uh, why is this? Um, because the compiler has automatic type deduction, but this does not always produce the, the results uh, which you desire. For example, in this example here, we have uh, an 8-bit integer named X, name with name X, and we want to add 100 to this, this integer. If we compile this function without further annotation, uh, the compiler will deduce that this expression here um, should be an integer 64. If you really want to be it also in the range of integer 8, then you have to be explicit, and you now can be explicit by using uh, this type hint here. Well, you could also be this explicit before, but type hint is, has an additional advantage in, uh, with, in comparison to typed, namely, if we do the same thing here, and we annotate the constant 100 so, such that it also should be interpreted as an 8-bit integer, then the function compiler will uh, produce the correct compiled function, which has an 8-bit integer as argument and an 8-bit integer as a result. What, uh, however, is the the benefit of using type hint instead of typed is that it vanishes during normal evaluation. So you can take this original uh, symbolic function here and evaluate it. And as you see, uh, the, the result is as you would expect it. The type hint has just, uh, so to say, been ignored during uh, normal evaluation. And it has been respected during compilation. So let's just try out um, seven to our compiled function. The result is, is okay. And of course, if we have an integer overflow, then Mathematica will all will um, will check uh, this and will uh, fall back to the symbolic evaluation in this case. Uh, what is quite noteworthy from my point of view is that uh, with version 32 now, uh, the performance of polynomial operations has been significantly improved. Uh, internally, uh, new algorithms and internal data structures have been improved. So for example, if I define here um, a large polynomial with uh, about 600 terms, and I'm trying to factor, find uh, the factors of this polynomial. It now in version 13.2 uh, takes about 0 0.3 seconds. And if I compare this with, sorry, with um, the version 13.1. The same computation lasts several seconds. Of course, the screencast is additionally um, 
slowing me down. 17 seconds in comparison. So this is really significant. And as the polynomial uh, grows, also the, uh, the difference will get uh, larger because uh, for, for polynomial factoring, uh, as I understood it, now is uh, a better algorithm with uh, better asymptotic, asymptotic complexity will be used. What also has been improved, and, and this is a uh, long, long going uh, effort, is uh, to, to be able to solve larger and larger classes of um, differential equations. And uh, for this special kind of differential equations, um, so called linear time invariant systems, uh, also a new sol solving algorithm has been implemented. So this gives us quite fast um, this relatively uh, uh, small solution here. And if I attempt the same thing in Mathematica 13.1, I have previously evaluated it already, you get this beast here. It's also a solution, but of course not as nice as, as this one here. Uh, Mathematica 13.2 also gives you now more fine-grained control over boards. Uh, for this purpose, uh, check a board is, is used. Check a board is um, a function which is available, which has been available for a longer time. But what is now new is the option propagate boards, which uh, is respected by the checkerboard function. So propagate a board, you can pass a true, false, or automatic as option value. Uh, so you can decide if, if the board uh, is propagated upwards or, or not. And to make it uh, better understandable, let's just look at the example here. So I'm initializing here a variable with uh, a certain string, uh, not yet the result is not yet, has not yet been evaluated, or the expression has not been evaluated here. And so what happens here is that um, this pause commando will run for five seconds and then uh, assign the string completed to result. We should uh, see it here. Uh, and if uh, the user presses a board while this pause, then the, the else branch, so to say, will take effect and the result uh, will be set to aborted. And with propagate aborts, I can, uh, can say if I want the expression result to be passed on or if, if the abort should be passed on. So in this case, I'm just to let you know, let's wait this five seconds, then this branch here is executed. And if I execute it once more and press Alt Enter, sorry. Um, I have, have aborted. Uh, you see that uh, this branch here has been um, executed. It's similar maybe to a try-catch construct in other programming languages, if you are familiar with that. Um, and the exception or the board has been uh, propagated upwards. If I set this to false, then um, report it again, then this uh, expression is also evaluated, but uh, the board is eaten or, or suppressed by this check report. And the result of the expression is as well the string aborted. Here is another example. Um, you can also have, for example, uh, a loop with which does uh, some memory um, consuming operations. And this is, in this example, it's just the expansion of this polynomial here. Uh, what this does is it uh, expands this polynomial for different values of i uh, from i from 0 to 5 
and if this succeeds with uh, the memory constraints so not more than uh, 20 kilobytes i think then uh, this completed message will be printed otherwise the abort message will be printed and uh, propagate abort is now set to automatic in this case so um, depending on this setting uh, the loop construct which is uh, at an outer level will be allowed to continue or will be aborted as well so let's have, let's have a try so we see here that um, for i equals zero it completed the computation successfully for i equals one it completed successfully and for i equals two uh, this memory constraint has not has been um, reached so the computation is aborted at this stage and the, the abort is propagated upwards so that the loop is aborted okay and if we set uh, the propagate abort to false then uh, it simply uh, tries with i equals 3, 4, and 5 again, and uh, so to say runs all loop iterations. Okay. Another branch. Um, um, in version 13.2, what has been added is also um, for clustering, now quality measurements. This the new function here is clustering measurements. It's called clustering measurements. And for example, if I have here um, four uh, point clouds, which you can visually very easily see that those are, should be uh, the clustering algorithms should uh, work well for this uh, point for four components. So let's try it out. We, we try to find clusters with a diff, with different number of clusters, uh, from two to six clusters. And for each uh, of these clustering results, we plot uh, the, the result of the clustering with a list plot and also the clustering measurements, so the quality Measures we get. Sorry. Maybe I should I should have re-evaluated. Okay, for two classes we have here uh, those measurements. You can. Uh, instead of passing summary here, you can uh, directly pass, for example, a silhouette as a string, then you will get back exactly this number here. And if, you, if we have just, for example, a look at the silhouette measure, then you see that the silhouette measure is highest uh, when we attempt uh, the clustering with four clusters. So we have 0 0.75 here, and for all other cluster, numbers uh, this measure is uh, um, yeah it's, it's the greatest for four clusters indicating that that four will be the correct choice now an entire uh, other topic is astronomy astronomy has been added as an entire new computational domain to to mathematica with version 13.2 and what has been added now is uh, the astro position function for example where you can ask where is mars um, where should i point the, the telescope to um, all, and this computation here is based on on your here and now so if you re-evaluate it, those numbers will change. So this is really the real-time uh, coordinates for your telescope at your current position. Um, 
and uh, you can also of course pass uh, the time and, and the, the geo position when asking for a certain position of, a, of, a, of Ganymede for example. Here we ask uh, what was the position of Ganymede when uh, it was first observed in 1610 in Pisa and probably this would be the the, the pointing direction of the telescope back then. Uh, there's also support for different uh, uh, reference frames, the equatorial and the ICRS reference frame. Um, and it's quite, um, Quite elaborate because uh, the position of Neptune is different based on uh, the is the question where do you see Neptune currently? So considering the light speed from from Neptune to here on Earth, or where is where is it actually? And this you can uh, pass with the option light time. So whether to consider light time or not, uh, you get different positions of Neptune. There is also the extra distance function, which lets you compute the distance between two uh, celestial bodies. And uh, also the so-called angular separation you can compute with extra angular separation yes so this is the angle separation of Jupiter and Saturn from uh, 2000, yes, now minus 10 years plus, plus 10 years, so 20 years around now. Um, and similar to geographics for, um, for visualizing uh, geographic um, Maps, you can also uh, use extra graphics for here, for example, looking at the uh, or Orion, exactly the Betelgeuse uh, star. <clears throat> and uh, there are several styling options for extra graphics available. For example, you can uh, use uh, a reference frame here, like the equatorial reference frame, you can uh, set the, the astro background to galactic sky so that you have a nice uh, telescope uh, based background image. Um, and you can set astro degree lines to five, per five degrees, for example. And if you want, you can also <laughs> uh, show uh, constellation in illustrations. So maybe this is not that scientific, but, but also nice. So this is just another example here. Um, what you can do with astrographics, for example, uh, there will be a solar eclipse in August 26. Um, and the Total phase uh, will be is visualized here in this red area, and the partial phase is here uh, slightly darker visualized. And if you, for example, sit in Bilbao here, uh, indicated by this point, you will be able to to witness a total um, solar eclipse, and uh, you can. Use extra graphics for um, generating a, a, so to say, a simulation of this solar eclipse when viewed from uh, Bilbao. 
course, I cannot see how long this will take now. As I said, the screencast seems to slow my computer quite a bit down. Yes, here it is. So you can see here the sun and here the moon, and um, as the time progresses, uh, the sun will be more and more um, hidden by the moon. Okay, let's go on. Um, for the features and improvements, uh, there is new, now a new core language. There are now new core language functions, uh, position largest and position smallest. So if you have an array of numbers, you can ask at which, which positions in this array is the, is the, are the maximum values. So there is uh, one unique maximum value at the position 851 and uh, you can verify that uh, the area at the position, at this particular position, is indeed the maximum. Uh, similar for position smallest. Uh, there is uh, now new graphics primitive, uh, which allows you to blur, uh, um, for example, certain curves in a plot. Um, so, in order to, to emphasize this fourth curve, uh, you can use a blurring here depending on, on this parameter. So, all other curves get more and more blurred and just the fourth curve has no blurring. Uh, what also is uh, maybe quite um, an improvement or uh, is when you're working with JSON data, you can now import it directly to the mathematical dataset format. So if I import here from the next bike Berlin, uh, the JSON, uh, then I can visualize, for example, how many bikes are currently available at those different uh, stations. Still running. Here it is. So the, those are those stations for the bikes and the darker um, the points, uh, the more bikes are available at this position. Okay. Um, trees have been added as first class citizen in the Wolfram language, also in version 13. What now has been added is also this Max Display Children um, option, which allows you when visualizing trees, you can, um, for example, uh, show just, just three children for each node and indicate how many uh, there are in total. So if I go to notebook directory two levels up, I'm in the training uh, directory and uh, there are di three direct subdirectories visible here and 40 subdirectories in total. So this, this is now possible using Max Display Children. Uh, what also has been added is uh, random dates. So I can uh, get a random date from January 2023 to now, or this is a concrete point in time which is randomly selected. Uh, of course, considering that uh, February has, with, with, without bias, towards longer months or something, um, And I can also change the date granularity. So if I just want a random 
day without time, then I can specify date granularity day. And uh, other improvements are, uh, for example, in barcode, recognize uh, micro QR is now supported, and image stitch supports spherical and cylindrical projection spaces, and video map uh, supports time varying parameters in video computations. I think this brings me already to the end of my presentation. It's a bit shorter today. Um, feature, the feature set of 13.2 is, um, or, or the number of changes in version 13.2 is 100 uh, functions have been significantly improved. Uh, in comparison, in version 13.0 and 13.1, it would it have been uh, around 400, I think. So, okay. Uh, if you want uh, further reading, uh, you can have a look at Stephen Wolfram's blog, where he announced the version 13.2, and an excellent presentation you can find also here at Wolfram U. And of course, then there is uh, in the documentation all new features summarized in, in various documentation pages. Okay, thank you for all for your attention. Uh, in case of any questions, um, I will now um, switch over to the Q&A session.